out. And then every other failed auction just made you, literally made you a fortune. Literally every other failed auction made you a fortune. And that was all based on a classroom we did yesterday. So there was no, again, no excuses for people not being able to see those trades. If they wanted to make money trading, they had a great chance to make their week, potentially even their month's money on the DAX this morning based on that storyline that we painted for you last night. But guess what? Probably very few people did. And now everybody's going to be sitting in the rubbish period of the session trying to pick up crappy trades in the middle of nowhere and saying, well, it doesn't work. Yeah, trading's not... It's hard being a lifestyle trader, guys, because lifestyle doesn't mean you can trade any time. Lifestyle means that you can trade for short periods of time, but it's still really, in most cases, the same time every day. You've still got to commit to doing the trades, right? Like the London Open, the Frankfurt Open, because if you come in, and I've said this many, many times, if you come in at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock London time and expect to be making big bucks, forget about it. You're going to just scalp the markets. You're going to just scalp the markets, guys. But yes, you can make a lot of money scalping the markets, but if you're coming in at 11 o'clock every morning, you're going to get the crap. I'm not saying you're crap, I'm not saying you're, but you're getting the crap to trade, which means 99% of your success will be based on the one thing that 99% of retail traders are bad at. Execution, right? 99% of retail traders are terrible at execution. And yet, the period that most retail traders trade, because they think, yeah, I'll just turn up at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, is when you need execution more than anything else. Because you're trading a lot of chop at times. You're trading a lot of sideways markets, a lot of brackets, a lot of consolidation, a lot of profit-taking areas. You're not involved in the new move. You're involved in the exit of the old moves. And that's when you start seeing retail traders saying, yeah, I'm following everything that you're telling me, but I'm not making any money. That's because your execution's rotten. If your execution was good, you would be making money, but you're also coming in and you're not getting the big trades. You're not getting the big trades because you're not starting early enough. You're not getting in early enough to trade. So yes, you can choose to be a inverted commas lifestyle trader, but you've still got to get in for half past six every morning for the DAX market opening to get ready for the sell-off. But yes, you can trade for perhaps an hour or two hours a day and finish up. That's a lifestyle trader. I mean, a professional trader, you're here for the whole bloody day, right? <clears throat> but that's what we are. We're here for the whole day working, trying to find opportunities, because that's what we do for a living. The sale has came off. The sales finally came off on that uh, last uh, retest sale. <clears throat> the crack spread was uh, driving us into that cell, and I, and I really wanted the cell, I mentioned that. <clears throat> so we really wanted the cell, we were desperate for the cell, we got the cell. It came off of it, 82.50s, finally trading 82 evens. Has anybody been uh, trying uh, the gold? Anybody been trying the gold? Um, storyline with the silver because obviously that's that is something you can trade as a scalper isn't it as a scalper that's something you could come in and say right I'm going to try trading some of these as scalp opportunities and you start looking for those scalp just those pure scalp opportunities nobody's bothered with it okay so we won't bother covering that one again then we'll just uh, but I'll show you one example of a great scalp that you could have had that would have made you uh, perhaps about $300 in, in a few minutes. And uh, this was a great example here because you can see that there's a, a real yield divergence into this low test. There's a real yield divergence into this low test. And when we zoom into that, you can see that uh, during that low test, you can see that the scalpers would have had a field day on this moving down, moving down, moving down, moving down. And then all of a sudden, on this candle here, the blue line's got a discount to the red line. And there's quite a sizable divergence in here. So obviously what happens is the red line drops. Well, that means, must mean that I've got a discount to price, if the price is still at the same price. So with the real yield diverging on the bullish side, I've now got an opportunity to buy a quick gold trade right there. 
And obviously, if I can buy into a quick gold trade right there, I have an absolute no-brainer trade uh, to sweep away that 56 all the way back to prior highs of, of, of a 59 and a half or 350 easy, literally easy dollars with a drawdown. Guess what of? A drawdown of one tick. One single tick. Bid offer spread. And that was it. Bid offer bloody spread, guys. You never even had a drawdown because it never even went against you one tick. The first thing that happened was it upticked and you made 300 bucks. How long? 12.10 to a high price at 12.20. 10 minutes to make 300 bucks. That could be you finished for the day. Because obviously now you're waiting for the next scalp. Remember, you're trying to get the scalp in line with the real yield. Because that's your big driver in the background. And then tie it up with a marker internal. The closest marker internal we can get is the gold-silver spreads. That's the closest market internal we can get, the gold silver spreads. And obviously, we're watching for these down ticks. You can see that we get an uptick here. We get a down tick here. We'll get an uptick here. We get an uptick here. We get an uptick here. So what's the spread here? What's the chance here? None. There is no trade, right? Because obviously, the, the, this just confirms. This just looks like fair value. So we didn't get that big sp uh, spike to the upside. We didn't get the big spike to the upside. OK. So we move on to the next trade, right? We just simply move on to the next trade. We're trying to find the next trade. So coming into the top edge, what is real yield doing? Real yield is now rising. We should now be able to work some top edge selling. We know where the high is. We draw a line. We know where the high is. We know what we're looking for. So what are we looking for? I want to see into this area. I want to see the pink line rising. But I want to see the blue line at a premium. Well, the blue line's at a massive premium to the red line, isn't it? Look, the blue line's are way up here. Are way up here. The blue line's massively premiumed, and the red line is massively discounted. So now I've got the blue line above the red line. What am I now looking for? Now I'm looking for the red line to uptick into that area. The blue line upticks into that area. The, the gold price should be falling. So as we come up into that area, I'm already aware that that is an automatic sell trade up here. Now, does it go well for me? Not really. It makes me eight, eight ticks, eighty dollars, and it scratches me out at plus one, right? Scratches me out at plus one, and then I get another uptick in the red line. Now I know it's on a red candle, but the actual bid offer spread is literally one or two ticks there. So you get another sell, and sure enough, you get down to fifty-seven sevens. You just made another two hundred dollars. You still made another two hundred dollars. Did I get an uptick in here? Well, I got a solid down tick. So I can't claim that that was a solid sell at 59 halves. So I can't, can't see it. I can't choose it. Okay. So it is what it is. So you made maybe 50 bucks in scratch. You made a, maybe another couple hundred bucks in scratch. You're starting to make a couple hundred bucks every time you take a steal. Every time you take a steal, you're making a couple of hundred bucks, right? Into the bottom edges. We can see that the blue line, <coughs> the blue line diverges beautifully into the bottom edges here. You see it? But we can't buy this candle because the red line's upticking hard. So we can't really buy this candle. But a retest with the blue line at the bottom edge here, you can now see that's possibly a good retest area to buy into. Because we can see that there is a value divergence starting to creep into this. There's a value divergence creeping into this phase here. And it's still in place when we retest in here. Well, what happened on these tr re this retest? Nothing. We get an uptick in the red line. And you're saying to yourself, Damn it. We should probably run the stops at least. It did run the stops, and obviously when they dropped down here, there's no way I could buy into that. So guess what? No trade. No trade. You just move on to the next one, right? So when you look back at this, you can see you had a brilliant buy trade there, a couple of really nice sell trades, and that's what you've had in the last hour or so. Three trades in the last hour based on this narrative. Is that bad? No. Oh, it's pretty good, actually. You can see there might be a trade setting up. The only downside of this trade at the moment is the fact that the red line and the blue line are pretty much sitting on top of each other. They're basically sitting on top of each other. So I'm very, very cautious about the sell into this. But obviously, selling into the higher prints is a definite trade opportunity where real yields rising. So so long as you're selling into those higher prints, you could probably easily get a stop in at break even just now based on the fact that the two lines are rising. Selling into optics is, is a doable proposition. Now, obviously, when you're looking at that, you can also recognize the fact that you're getting a small bid on the, uh, the, uh, the uh, yen as well. So you've obviously just got to be cautious about that bid coming in and the yen into those higher prices. 
Uh, so you can sell it, but you can sell it on passive top edges, guys. You can sell it, but you can sell it on passive upticks. You're not chasing at this stage because the red line combination, the big volumes coming in, there's a lot of stuff kicking off. Okay, what else? Okay, so in terms of data, obviously we do have some numbers coming out today. Uh, it is Thursday, the 29th of September. And in terms of numbers, what are we looking at? We're looking at uh, final GDP numbers, Q and Q. Not, uh, not a market mover, as far as uh, most, uh, most data releases are concerned. Unemployment claims also coming out at 130. That's going to be relatively important, 215,000. Uh, GDP numbers at 8.9% coming out as well. Uh, GDP at minus 0.1% month on month for Canada, also expected to print. So that's what we've got at 130. As we move forward into the afternoon session, a couple of speakers like Bullard coming out to chat, give us their infinite wisdom. We've also got the Nari gas storage numbers this afternoon as well. So not a lot, but 130. Did anybody get the short sell, by the way, on gold on the, up, on the passive uptick? Anybody get the short sell on gold on the passive uptick? We did tell you where it was. And then it retested that passive uptick, guys, at 60.7. It just traded 59.7 for 10 ticks. Was that an easy 10 ticks? Was that an easy way to make $100, guys? Was that an easy way to make 100 bucks? Sure. Make your 100 bucks, but because this is rising, you take your 100 bucks, don't you? Just close out your trade. You don't hold on to it, guys. That's not a small rally. That's why I told you to be very, very cautious about this. That is not a small rally. You take your 100 bucks and you say, thank you. That was a bit of a bonus. You take it, you're grateful for it, and you make sure you get off the bloody trade. Stops at break even, worst case scenario, on the spike. That's just worth $100 right there, guys. That live call in the room was another $100 winner if anybody decided to trade it after we just mentioned it. So welcome in. Hope you're all good this morning, guys. Hope you're all ready to rock and roll for the afternoon session. We'll be touching on all the various different markets so that we can take a, a look at it, but we'll obviously go back over that incredible DAX morning. If only somebody had traded it, we would have had some pretty, pretty, pretty impressive stories this morning, eh? Some pretty impressive stories. If only somebody had traded it, guys. Oh, hum. Maybe sometime people will take the easy stuff. Maybe some stage people will take the easy stuff. So welcome in. I'm going to grab a 